Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello, everybody. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why are we so insincere this evening? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I'm wrangling all sorts of wonderful things right now. Okay, moving along. Yes. It's a, it's a combination tech edition. We're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about tagless, and then we're going to talk about combo tweet. Yes. Yes, we are. And with John Nastos. Hello, Hello John. everyone. Hello, John. <laughs> or JNPDX on Twitter. So I think we're going to talk about tagless first because I think there's a lot well, there's a lot going on with tagless too. But, but let's start there. Why don't you tell us what it is? Okay, uh, tagless is basically a service that lets users uh, get and set definitions for hashtags. It's actually not specifically limited limited to hashtags, but uh, you know that's what they are on Twitter, and that's where the majority of the users come from. But it could also be tags on services like Flickr or Technorati or any other service that lets users tag content. And how does someone define a tag? Uh, there are a couple different ways. Uh, I wanted it to be as easy as possible for users. So the first way is that you can go to the website. Um, Tagless.com works now, which is T-A-G-A-L-U-S.com. And uh, you can log in there with your open ID or with your Twitter ID, and you can use the web interface. Uh, the second way is you can use, um, there's a bot that'll pick up definitions on Twitter. So if you say, at Tagless, define so-and-so, like PDXTST, as the Portland Twitter Storm team, the bot will go through and round up all those definitions and uh, theoretically put it into the database correctly. So when you have a bunch of people, as I've seen in several cases, defining tags, a little bit differently or wildly differently, how does that all line up? Okay, well this this uh, was one of the ideas that I want to be sure to have when uh, when I launched. And the idea is there can be multiple definitions for a tag and uh, users can log in and vote on which one is most accurate. So, you know, if someone says that PDXTST stands for the uh, Oklahoma State Rodeo Championship, <laughs> obviously that's, you know, theoretically people log in and say, no, um, Brom Patoyo's definition, calling it the Portland Twitter Storm Team, is more accurate. Let's vote that one up to the top. And that way, if someone uh, tweets at Tagless and asks and says, define PDXTST, hoping to get a definition back, it'll, they'll get the, uh, the one that's crowdsourced as the most accurate. Oh, so you can you can tweet at Tagless to define something or to get a definition? Yeah. I didn't know that. It's uh, and actually you don't have you no longer have to use the Twitter at reply syntax. You can just say Tagless with no at sign. Mm -hmm. And the story behind that is uh, Twitter is very picky about the way it does at replies. Mm -hmm. So normally if you're uh, if your settings are set the way that most people have theirs, you only see at replies to other people that you're following, um, which you know cuts down on the amount of noise that's coming through your conversations. I wouldn't change basically. that the first week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, it depends what you want. You yeah. know, uh, a lot of people say, well, it's useful for finding new people. Mm -hmm. um, so what you can do is if you if you leave off the at sign before tagless then that lets other people that aren't following Tagless see that definition and they can see that you're, you know, you're using the service, you're defining it, they can agree or disagree with your definition and things like that. So about how many people have been using it? Uh, I looked it up expecting that you might ask a question <laughs> like that. And uh, there are 282 tags right now and 300 some definitions as of this afternoon at Beer and Blog. How many of those definitions are us being funny <laughs> <laughs> or thinking that we're funny? And how many of them are actually someone defining something like a PDX Twitter Storm Team or uh, Ignite Portland 5? I'd say the vast majority of them are actually serious definitions. Um, Not get off my lawn. Well, I mean, that has a legitimate serious definition. But, uh, hey, excuse me. I use that definition quite often. <laughs> yes, I know you do. Did you define it on tagless? Yeah, usually it's a Hockley hashtag get off my lawn. <laughs> no, I'm asking if you've defined it. Have you gone no, up? Terosi got not. to that one first, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Uh, actually, the, the thing that happens more often than not is 
um, with tags that aren't going to be that useful for the general public is someone will define something that, you know, maybe uh, they used or someone used once and it's not used again. Mm -hmm. But I don't discourage that. I think that even if someone makes up, you know, one of those ridiculously long hashtags like, you know, uh, too tired to go to beer and blog, but trying to get in the car anyway to make it. Mm -hmm. You know, I say go ahead and define that anyway, because, you know, the more tags we have going, the more interesting the service is. Do you find that most of the people using it are Portland based or is it stretching out a little further? Uh, at the very beginning, it was mostly Portland. Uh, and it, I actually launched it during Snowpocalypse. Mm. And so that was, those were some of the first definitions that showed up. Uh, the second sort of round of people that came in were people in Washington when the floods happened in Washington right after that. So then I immediately started f uh, feeling really guilty about this because I was excited when natural disasters happened because people would flock to Tagless to, uh, to, define, to define the tags, which, you know, is a little sick, I guess. But uh, <laughs> since, Bad man, Joe. <laughs> since then, I've seen it come in waves. There was a UK wave a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and now I think it's starting to spread a little more. And then when uh, when Rick wrote about it for the Silicon Florist, then it got another wave of Portland people, which was nice to see. And I was appreciative because even though I already knew about Tagless, it was like someone was doing my show homework for me. Yeah, that's always good. So there have been some happenings. Rick wrote about it. And there's some other stuff. Do you want to talk about the other stuff before we move on to Combo Tweet? Sure. Okay. No, so no, no. We don't need that yet. Dr. Normal has props, but... <laughs> we don't need them quite I'll, yet. I'll hold off on my props. Yeah, that's for the combo tweet segment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so what happened today is since I've launched Tagless, there have been a number of other services that have tried to sort of do this same thing. And uh, there is one that, you know, really didn't work out at all. And then there was one today that uh, Marshall Kirkpatrick tweeted about. Uh, called what the hashtag, which is really remarkably similar um, mm -hmm. to Tagless, and they launched it today. And uh, but it has a couple features that aren't the same. You know, the the Twitter interface doesn't exist like it does in Tagless, and uh, it's a wiki form, so it doesn't have the voting uh, ability that the Tagless did. But so this spurred me to write this blog post. Uh, that is up on the Tagalus blog, which is blog.tagalus, so blog.tagal.us. And uh, I decided that, you know, since Portlanders have this sort of strong sense of community, as keeps getting shown at Beer and Blog and Ignite and all that, that maybe I could get Portlanders to try to uh, make Tagalus the sort of definitive service. So I'm starting what is tagged as Tag Sprint. Mm -hmm. And this started at Beer and Blog today, and a bunch of people got together and they started adding a whole bunch of tags to Tagless. So, you know, I saw uh, really quite a few tags come in. And so I'd like any Portlanders out there who would like the Portland grown solution to be the definitive one to go on Tagless, define whatever tags you want. I don't care if it, you know, hasn't been used before, if it's something you always think should be used. If it was an event that happened, you know, six months ago, you never know. People might still be searching for it. Um, so the blog post I wrote about it is bit.ly slash tag sprint. Um, you, can, you can read about it there. You can go and, and follow Tagless and read about it. But I would encourage everyone, you know, during Strange Love Live, you're, if you're in the chat room, you can go and define a bunch of tags while you're at it on Tagless and, uh, and make the service even better. Okay. Do you have any questions, Dr. Norris? Should we move on to I was just thinking oh. of a couple. Um, of questions? Or a couple tags. If they haven't oh. been added at the BL, BLNW, right? The Business Leaders Northwest. That's already. I, that Should was. Uh, I requested that the other day. And, and then there was. Someone came through. And then there was. Uh, what was uh, the other night? Uh, the Seattle uh, um, Times did a NNBN or something like that. That one's on there as well. Excellent. Look, actually. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> You have computer access. You should go check. I should do that right now <laughs> yeah. instead of making sure the stream is, is working right now. Um, <laughs> I think we're ready to move on to Combo Tweet, which came after Tagalus, but it used to be Tagalus as well. Yeah. Um, I Basically, I didn't have a name yet for, for it, and I needed to launch it on one of my, my domains. Mm -hmm. So launching it on JazzPDX didn't really didn't make, make sense. sense. Uh, so yeah, I, I started writing a Twitter client, 
Uh, and right so now it's... Was this because you got bored or is this just uh, <laughs> just as an extension or why? Uh, it was out of necessity, actually. Okay. Um, and the the reason that I started writing this, this Twitter client, which is now called Combo Tweet, and you can find it at combotweet.com, uh, is there are very few solutions that work well for people that have multiple Twitter accounts. And I know you're one of them. You have I the am. Strange Love Live account, you have Cami Chaos. Um, I have and my other secret accounts, the secret accounts. <laughs> um, you know, I have one for Tagless and JN PDX and one for jazz PDX and a whole bunch of stuff. There are a lot of people like this, um, that they have a lot of accounts that they need to log into. And if you try to use, of course, TweetDeck won't let you do this. Um, it, you can't use the web interface because just like logging into your mail, you know, you can log in That's one time when I and tweet personal things from the strange little account. And I'm like, Oh. <laughs> oh, crap. Strange of Life just took my mom to the airport. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, go ahead. It's not about me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so what I did is I started writing this client. And the original idea was that you were going to be able to run it on the web. You were going to be able to download the source and run it locally or run it as an air client. Um, unfortunately, two of those sort of fallen apart since the announcement of Twitter switching to OAuth. Mm -hmm. And there's a story behind that, which we can get into, which I think is why Dr. Normal has props available. Yes. He's been excited about this all day. <laughs> yes, I'm very excited. Mad props to me. Okay. <laughs> da -dun -dun. And moving on. Bad puns. Very clever. Um, <laughs> so, so I started writing Did you guys bring tweet. a drummer tonight, too? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any drummers. I try to avoid them. They're unsavory. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Normal's a drummer. And you were saying? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the uh, the quick s story is it's a Twitter client. You use it just like any of your other Twitter clients. Um, but I'm sort of trying to push the the bleeding edge of, uh, of authentication and security and stuff like that. So you can log in using OAuth, which is going to be Twitter's new spec for doing authentication. You can have multiple accounts open. You can have search tabs open. Uh, it's almost all written in JavaScript. It's open source. And what I would really like to see happen, and a couple people have already collaborated, a couple people have expressed interest, but I'd like to see this be a project where a lot of people are contributing to the source. Um, I think that, you know, a lot of people run sort of one of the run of the mill Twitter clients like TweetDeck or Twirl or something like that. And they wish that there was, you know, X feature, whatever it is. Um, so writing in something that's fairly easy to understand, like JavaScript, I hope this can be a solution where people can contribute to the source and add whatever that feature is that they want, um, which I think would be, would be a, a really useful thing to have. So I know that earlier we had at least one request from the studio audience for a feature, and that was being able to upload photos which, to a TwitPic or whatever that is. TwitPic? Yeah. So here's why that's, uh, that hasn't happened yet and why it probably won't happen for a while, which gets into OAuth again. So uh, with all your normal Twitter clients like Tweety on the iPhone or TweetDeck or something like that, you give the client your password. Mm -hmm. And you trust that that client is going to use your password judiciously and hopefully only log in to Twitter for you and only tweet as you and so on. So TwitPic works the same way. Uh, you log into TwitPic with your Twitter ID and with your password. Uh, and the idea of OAuth is that we're going to be able to avoid uh, that system where you're giving your password out all the time. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, Combo Tweet isn't going to talk to TwitPic until TwitPic also implements OAuth. Okay. And actually, I'm not sure how that's going to work yet. Um, passing tokens and keys around between multiple web apps like that. It'll be interesting to see okay, how Dr. that pans Norm, we'll out. Bring it out. Okay. Okay. Is it time? It's sure. time. We're, we're breaking new ground tonight on Strange of Life. We are high tech people. A after hours, we're going to break some new ground. <laughs> we have a whiteboard. Tonight, tonight on tech, we're bringing out the whiteboard, which of course we'll have to describe to the audio listeners. I'll hold that up. Okay. Dr. Normal, can Oh, these get, are the pens. Can right? you get... Oh, oh no, no, those, no, are, those, are, those are the bad. Sharpies. Those Don't use us. the Sharpies. Here we, go. <laughs> we should have hid the make Sharpies. A, a permanent, uh, and then you diagram. can sign it and we'll hang it on the wall. Look, look what John Nastas. No, really, we don't want you to do that. <laughs> Given John the whiteboard. 
Okay, so I think their request is basically that I explain something about Oath I'm gathering. I think with, visually, with and I read visually. through the post, and yeah. I was kind of like, okay. And then I had to kind of draw it in my head. Yeah, he, right. he printed out the post, and he said, did you see uh, that uh, Rick linked to a post that John wrote? And I said, yes, right. I read it. And he said, did you read the whole thing, Cammie? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I did. And he said, did you understand it? <laughs> and I said, part of it. Yeah. So draw the part a, where you said technical. Right. Yeah, I put a warning. Yeah. I put did. a disclaimer on this. Said from this point on, it's gonna be it's gonna be in depth. So yeah. Draw us a simple diagram of what you're and, and explain what the issue that you're you're trying to figure out with OAuth is. Okay. Um, so before I do that, I should explain that this post that people are referring to uh, is at blog.combotweet.com, and I'm sure someone in the chat room can uh, refer you to the actual post, although there are only two up there right now, so it's really not very complicated to find. Um, but I, I voiced a few concerns that I have about OAuth, and I'd love people to jump in if they're well-versed in this sort of thing, because my hope is that someone's going to tell me, this is why you're wrong, this is why it's actually going to work out okay. So you like to be wrong? I, in this one very specific case, I like to be wrong. No okay. other cases. Okay, so let's okay. let's turn the board around. Well, I think I can actually oh, okay. I can do it. All well, right. Yeah, you can do it. Just if you want to be fancy, you. go right ahead. Okay. I'll hold it up. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have the consumer. Let's draw a nice consumer. big box there. He's drawing a big green box a big for green you audio box. listeners. <laughs> Yeah, this, I don't know how well this is going to come out of our audio. <laughs> you read the blog post if you're listening you to the angle podcast. It, angle it a little bit. We're getting a light. There we go. Nice. Better? Okay. So yeah. it's a big green box, but it's not filled in. Right. Okay. okay so uh, what we'll call the this green box is C, which is the consumer or client or mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. Um, so this is basically, well, there are sort of two sides to this. but uh, There this, are four sides to the box. So it should be okay. <laughs> I guarantee this is going to get confusing and messy. Um, and then we're going to, there's going to be Twitter over here. So Twitter will be TW. Hi, Twitter. I love you. Okay, so, okay. and then there's going to be the end user. Um, so. More green boxes. Kami Chaos is the end user. <laughs> we, mean, we need to make it really simple then. Uh, <laughs> So what happens uh, normally if you wanted to uh, to log in, like I explained before, you'd give your password to your client or mm -hmm. your consumer. Which always makes me nervous. Right. And and the consumer every time would uh, would make requests on your behalf to Twitter using that password. Mm -hmm. and, and so, the, yeah, and the consumer is the app that you're using. Yeah, the app. And that's whether that's a web app or a desktop client. Combo tweet or, so or one of my tweet. air or right. one of my apps on my iPhone, for example. Exactly. Yeah. I'll get to the when can I have combo tweet on the iPhone at some point. Yeah, well, that's continue also a good question. And I have an answer, I think. Okay. Um, Let's continue with this. Then, then we'll ask that. Okay. So I'll try to make this pretty simple. Do you the need I, a different color? Because we have more. Sure. Let's do another color. <laughs> okay. So transactions are going to be blue. So transactions are blue for the audio listeners. <laughs> we have three green boxes. Uh, so the idea in, in a lot of ways is really the same. But instead of giving your password, uh, what ComboTweet is going to do is it's going to send this request to Twitter. Uh -oh. <laughs> blue marker doesn't work. This is actually how it works most of the time. It's supposed to send a request we have and it doesn't. Blue marker <laughs> fail for those on the audio cast. <laughs> And that's why OAuth won't work. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's hope the red marker does better. Oh! No, everything is going to be in green or black. Maybe black will work. No. Oh! oh! My suggestion that you change colors was a bad one. Someone go define <laughs> marker fail on yeah. Tagalus. <laughs> Please. Okay. Please do. So, uh, Nastos market fail. <laughs> marker fail. <clears throat> what's, <Okay. laughs> what's going to happen now is uh, when you say, okay, I want to use this client, so maybe combo tweet. Mm -hmm. Can you still hear me, by the way, with yes. when I'm yeah. doing this? Okay. Perfect. Um, you want to use combo tweet. So what combo tweet does is it sends a request to Twitter and it says, I want to be able to access Twitter on the behalf of my client, Cami Chaos. Uh -huh. So Twitter says, okay, well, let me check with should Cami they, Chaos. Shouldn't there be a little arrow that goes? Yeah, I suppose there probably should. Mm. 
Thank you. <laughs> so Twitter <laughs> says, okay, I'm going to check with Cami Chaos um, and make sure that she says that's okay. So Twitter sends a request yeah. here. Mm -hmm. And you say, yeah, I trust that combo tweet is going to be okay. You know, I might revoke that privilege in the future. So Cami Chaos says, sure, that's fine. Sends a request back. And then what Twitter does is it gives uh, the consumer or the web app a token. So the token is uh, more or less a replacement for your password. Okay. Um, the other thing that happens here is when this first request is made from the client to Twitter, mm -hmm. the, uh, the client or the consumer has its own password. So that's something that's never happened before. You know, TweetDeck doesn't have its own password. It just always uses yours. Okay. Um, and that says, you know, I'm this app. I'm making uh, requests to Twitter on behalf of Combo Tweet. You know, this is how I prove that I'm me. Okay, and just because I'm feeling really evil, what would happen if we added a the picture tweet pick in <laughs> <laughs> yeah if we added twit pick that would be twit somewhere floating ethereally in uh, -huh. uh the center here <laughs> and it would have the same arrowy goodness well it would either have it would either just be part of this circle mm -hmm. or the second way to do it which might be even more complex would be like this sort of spokes in a wheel situation where everything talk to everything else um communication skills are key people yeah we'll have to see how that happens so so here's the uh here's where the problem comes in here's one of the three concerns that i listed mm -hmm. um so i mentioned that the consumer has a key mm -hmm. that it's using that says i'm combo tweet uh well that's great if it's running on a web app so on the web you have no way of of seeing that key and because the source code is all hosted on my server, you know, no one has, no one has the ability to go in there and search for that key. But mm -hmm. if, uh, if you're running it as an air app that's written in JavaScript or Flex or something like that, then theoretically a hacker can go in and can find that key and then can act maliciously on behalf of that application. And so all the other concerns that I have about this system are somewhat related to this and how... Uh, how all those keys are actually going to be kept secure, um, how the the tokens are going to be stored, and for how long, and things like that. So I think it's it's a great solution for web apps, and I think this actually might push people into using web apps more of the time, mm -hmm. which I also think is a good thing. Um, but I'm not entirely sure that it's really the right solution for desktop clients, iPhone clients, uh, and things like that. And I'm not alone in this. The creator of Tweety, who's uh, 8 bits on Twitter, A T E B I T S. Uh, I must go add that later. <laughs> yeah, well, he's a, he's an interesting guy to follow. He, you know, he'll start debates over what correct syntax for retweet is and mm -hmm. stuff. He has very specific ideas about these things, and he has. Uh, he has concerns that are very similar, and he's skeptical that you know doing authentication this way for Tweety is the right thing. So we'll have to see what happens. So let me ask, because that's what I do. I ask questions occasionally when I remember what they are. Um, as an end user, I actually really prefer the Air apps because it's, it's easier. It's all right there for me. It's right. not in the way of the other thing. It's separated from all the web pages that I have open. But is it a lot safer to use a web app? Uh, well, as, as it stands right now, if we ignore OAuth, mm -hmm. you know, if it, like it were, it, like it was, uh, three weeks ago. So if OAuth, go away OAuth. <laughs> if OAuth didn't exist, then the answer to your question would be, uh, the Air app probably would be safer. Okay. And you're assuming that the Air app isn't acting maliciously, which, uh, I've never met anyone that's actually gone through and checked their, uh. The headers going out from their machine to see but we're assuming that those clients are but know. so that's because the air app authenticates directly with twitter right the the air logs apps, in directly to twitter right they theoretically don't act with a proxy server i see um and i'd actually if you're concerned about this type of thing i would be uh really skeptical about that um, right yeah it, it seems to me like every air app air client that you that you get to interface with Twitter. I mean, it's still like, uh, give us your right. you know, password. And yeah. So you're, you're assuming that the way that they wrote it is that, uh, they're just going to talk to Twitter without a proxy. 
Right. So in that situation, then you're much safer having an air app than using mm. a web app. Um, but when we transition into OAuth, and the, the way that Twitter originally said that this was going to happen, and I don't know if this is still the plan, uh, but they said that they're going to run a closed beta for a while. So Tagless and Combo Tweet are part of the closed beta. Um, they're going to run that for a while. They're going to run a public beta for a while. And then they're going to deprecate the HTTP authentication. In the event that that happens, I would wager that you're going to be safer using a web app. Um, Curses. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we'll, we'll have to see how that plays out. Um, there, could be, there could be things that, uh, that happen that make that not the case. So, you know, I mean, OAuth is pretty new technology to begin with, right? I mean, it's been yeah. out there for, I mean, technology or protocol, let's say. And I know it seems to me that the people who are promoting OAuth and, and OpenID as well, when the security issues come up, they're like, well, you know, we're, you know, this is new. This is, this is still good for you. You know, um, we <laughs> have to work vitamins. out the kinks of security. I think they're, it seems to me that they're promoting it to move forward because we need something like this, right? It's filling a void and, you know, having people work through the security issues and all that will, will come as the technology matures. Right. Where do you stand on that? I mean, how, you're implementing it. So I guess, you know, are you a supporter or is, does this kind of make you kind of taken aback and kind of like say, <laughs> well, I don't know if I want to use this or. Uh, where I stand right now, about a week ago, I was super excited and I thought, it was like the greatest thing uh, to happen to security and authentication. And now I'm, I'm just uh, a little more skeptical about it. And I think that, uh, and this by no means should sound like I'm against OAuth in any way. I just want everyone to make sure they know what they're getting into. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want people thinking that I'm saying that we shouldn't be going down this Road because I think we should be going down a road, and it very well could be the uh, the OAuth road. This might be the right path to go on. I just want, uh, I'd like to be sure personally, if I'm writing apps, that I understand what's going on, and I'm not entirely sure that um, that people do know what's going on yet. So that's one of the reasons why I encourage people to uh, to post a comment to the blog, and I think that's why Rick retweeted it and stuff like that, is that this discussion should happen. Mm -hmm. um, because like I said, hopefully I'm wrong, and hopefully there are solutions to these problems, and we really will be going down a path where we aren't gonna have the situation like we had a few weeks ago, where there are people that uh, were getting their Twitter accounts hacked because they had given their password out. You know, mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to avoid. And I think that would be a great thing to avoid. Is there, um, I was going to say, is there some tie-in to other security protocols? Like what, what is it, what type of, uh, is there any encryption that's going out through OAuth at a lower layer? Uh, yes. Okay. So, I mean, I, I'd have to go back and read the specs again to tell you exactly what it is. This is like an HTTPS. That's or, what, that's what you're yeah. supposed to use when you're okay. doing, uh, right. when you're doing OAuth stuff, which is of course great, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's good that we're doing that. And then a lot of people are saying that OAuth is, uh, they, it's also a useful service to use in conjunction with OpenID. Mm -hmm. So this is not a replacement for OpenID. Uh, they share some similar characteristics, but they don't share, uh, they don't actually share similar goals or similar functions. Um, so actually what I've done with combo tweet is I've combined the two, uh, which, so what you do is you can sign in to your multiple accounts. So maybe you have your search tab for Beer and Blog and your search tab for Strange Love Live and your Cami Chaos account. I getting all those search tabs, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your, uh, and you have your Cami Chaos account and your mm -hmm. Strange Love Live account. So uh, what I've done is I've, you can now save that information to the server using an open ID. So mm -hmm. my, you know, I don't consume any usernames and passwords that way. You can save the access tokens on the server, and that way you're not broadcasting that information back and forth over and over again, which theoretically is uh, a good thing. And d did we mention where the blog post is, just to make sure we did. that people... We did. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> a little bit 
well, why don't we mention it one more time just where your blog post is for people to comment sure to listen to the audio so that's at blog.combo tweet okay and uh there's dot also com. yeah dot com and there's also blog.tagless which we talked about before i have one more question before we have to wrap it up and move on to after hours and that is when would there be an iphone or a mobile app okay so uh hopefully very soon um there's a a package called uh, phone gap, which mm -hmm. people are, I know there's a couple of Shazao developers that are using this. And the idea is that you can translate a JavaScript app or a web app into uh, something that can use the native functionality of an iPhone, an Android phone, or a Blackberry. Nice. So what I'd like to do is be able to use, use that same code and you can have it available on your iPhone. Not exactly sure when that's going to happen yet, but hopefully soon. All right. It was wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you so much, John, for joining us. Please, please stay tuned for After Hours. Um, we're going to have the same guest, but we're going to make a large transition in just a few moments. So Yeah, there's going to be a lot of new stuff. Yeah. If you thought the whiteboard was good, wait until <laughs> you see what's... Or if was... you didn't think it was good. <laughs> wait, yeah, if you didn't like the whiteboard, please still hey, stay. Hey, don't give the whiteboard it. No, it has nothing to do with the whiteboard, I promise. <laughs> Even the audio listeners will enjoy. Yes. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us.